All right, here's a reaction and a question that involves some quantities that we can relate to the chemical equation. Suppose I have 500 grams of hydrogen. How much nitrogen would I need to react with it in grams? And further, how much ammonia would I make from that? We can approach this problem using what is called stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is how we relate chemical substances to each other quantitatively using their chemical reaction. And so um, I want you to balance this equation. Try your balancing skills. Pause the video, balance it, and come back. So you should get the following coefficients. You should have nitrogen, three hydrogens, and two ammonias. And what stoichiometry tells us is that in this reaction, we get the following equalities. We get that one mole of nitrogen is equal to three moles of hydrogen in terms of this reaction only, uh, for purposes of determining how much of each you'll need. Because this is saying we need to put three molecules of hydrogen with every one molecule of nitrogen in order to make our ammonia. And so, uh, with the chemical equation there. So, uh, this equality will hold true for us. And this is the only way we will ever be able to convert between different substances within a chemical equation. If we have an amount of one substance and we find, want to find out the amount of another substance, we have to use stoichiometry. There's no getting around it. And so the only thing that we're adding in here is the idea that the reaction coefficients will tell us these relationships. From here, we also get that one mole of nitrogen is equal to two moles of ammonia. And of course, through the transitive property, or just looking at the coefficients themselves, we get two moles of ammonia is three moles of hydrogen. Uh, so this is what the stoichiometry tells us. Because those are our reaction coefficients, we get these equalities out, whatever they happen to be. If your coefficients were the same, one mole of nitrogen is one mole of oxygen, whatever, uh, that's also equality to get out. And so if we wanted to convert 500 grams into grams of nitrogen to see how much nitrogen we need to react with that hydrogen, we need to go through moles. And for right now, we're going to follow the same pathway each and every time. We're going to start with our mass of substance A. We're going to convert that to moles of A. We will convert that to moles of our second uh, component of the reaction. And then from the moles, we'll convert that to mass of B. That's what we're going to be able to do right now. In the, uh, Further chapters, we're going to add things to this uh, kind of diagram. And so with this, we're going to see we need three conversion factors then that will get us in between these units. So if we're in grams of A and we want moles, we use the molar mass, right? We'll use the molar mass of A. If we want to go from mass of, of B to moles of B or vice versa, we use the molar mass of B. That's molar mass. I'll write that out. That's, uh, that's what mm stands for. And if we want to go from moles of A to moles of B, that's where the stoichiometry comes in. That's our reaction coefficients. And so we have all of those now. We can figure out the molar mass of A and B, whatever they happen to be, in this case hydrogen and nitrogen, and we have our reaction coefficients from the balanced equation. 
Putting them all together will allow us to convert from mass of one substance to mass of another one. So if we were to plan this out, we're really going from 500 grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen to moles of nitrogen to grams of nitrogen. Because that's what the problem is asking us to do. And the only way, the only, only, only way to convert between different substances is using these mole ratios as reaction coefficients. That's the only way to do this. So if we're to set this up, we simply need to look up our three uh, conversion factors. We have the two molar masses we're going to need, as well as the coefficients. We've already got the coefficients from balancing. So we need the molar masses. Let's go through it. 500 grams. I think I had four straight things there. Hydrogen. This is just unit conversion. Our molar mass of hydrogen is 2.016 grams per mole. It's also a good idea to include your substance as you're going through this, uh, so you don't get uh, confused. Next, so we're now here. We need to now go to moles of nitrogen. So we saw from our reaction that we had three moles of hydrogen for one mole of nitrogen. So that's our reaction coefficient. So we're now at moles of nitrogen. And if we want grams of nitrogen, then we need the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 28.02 grams, yeah, for one mole of nitrogen. Notice that all of these cancel out. We'll use red here. Grams hydrogen cancels. Moles hydrogen cancels. Moles nitrogen cancels. And we're left with grams of nitrogen, which is what the question asked for. All right, so we can go ahead and do the math. 500 divided by 2.016 divided by 3 times 28.02. And we get uh, quite a bit, right? We end up with needing 2,316 grams of nitrogen. And that's going to be with our sig figs. We're always going to base our sig figs based off of our original measurement. Uh, so in that case, it's 500 with four sig figs. So our final answer should have four sig figs. And so that's the amount of nitrogen we're going to need in order to react with all of this hydrogen. And now, if we wanted to ask ourselves how much ammonia would we produce, that's the second part of this question, we can do that as well. We can use either the hydrogen or nitrogen to figure this out. Generally speaking, it is better to do the one you know absolutely for sure. We know we have 500 grams of hydrogen. That was given to us in the problem. The 2316, we also know, but we're not maybe a thousand percent sure if that's possible, because uh, maybe we made a calculator mistake. So it's always better to start with the number you absolutely know for sure, so the 500. If we want to convert that to ammonia instead, we are going to follow the same pathway, but instead of using nitrogen, we're going to use ammonia. And so we can go ahead and do this. So 500 grams of hydrogen. We're going to use our molar mass of hydrogen. In this case, we're converting to ammonia. So we had three moles of hydrogen, two moles of ammonia. Those are our reaction coefficients. We have the molar mass is 17.034 grams per mole. Again, you, you may need to actually calculate these. I just happen to have memorized all of them by doing you know, chemistry teaching for so long. So um, you may not be able to do this as fast, and that's fine. That's normal as you're learning this process. Notice again, the grams should cancel out. The moles of hydrogen cancel out. Moles of ammonia cancel out. We're left with grams of ammonia. Always double check that. Let's go ahead and do it. 500 divided by 2.016 divided by 3 times 2, times 17.034, and we get, surprisingly, 2,816 grams of 
ammonia. How is that not surprising? Think about it. Notice 28.16 is the same as our the sum of our original masses. Right? So if we have that much hydrogen, that much nitrogen printing together, we should expect them to make up our product. So you can always double check your answers. Make sure the math makes sense. If you're doing a combination or decomposition reaction, it's very easy to check whether you've got your uh, substances correct or not. Because your uh, mass of your reactants should also equal the mass of your products. Because the moles are equal. We did that with balancing. And so, as a result, we do see that our hydrogen mass and our nitrogen mass is equal to our product mass. And this is, by the way, called the law of conservation of mass. You can always do this to double check your work on a reaction. The mass of the reactants should always equal the mass of the products. All right, unless, of course, you have side reactions happening, which is something we'll deal with in another video. All right, so hopefully now this process of stoichiometry makes sense. It's simply a unit conversion. We're going from a mass of one substance to a mass of another substance through moles. You can only do it through mo using moles. So you'll take your original mass, convert it into moles. From there, you use your reaction coefficients to convert it into moles of your second substance of interest and then use its molar mass to determine the mass of, of whatever you're looking at. So that's how stoichiometry works. Definitely a good thing to practice because this is not something that you can just do once. In our next video though, once you've practiced this, um, we'll look at what happens when we don't have even numbers of our reactants and products like we do this time.